Okay, in this video, we're gonna be using the chain rule to find DDT of F of R of T, where R of T is a vector valued function. Um, let's take a look and see what we can do. So first up, we have uh, this question number nine from the source I'm getting them from. F of X, Y is three X minus seven Y. And we have that R of T, the path that we're following is cosine T sine T, which is the unit circle. And we're gonna find this value at T equals zero. So first we need to know how to find uh, DFDT, because that's essentially what we're trying to find, DFDT. And DFDT is going to be, uh, so this is a chain rule problem. F is a function of X and Y, and then X is cosine of T, Y is sine of T. So we are gonna do partial F, partial X times, and then DX DT. So X is only a function of T, so DX DT. It's partial F, partial X, and then DX DT plus partial f partial y, and then times dy dt, because again, y is only a function of t. f is a function of x and y, like you cannot solve for one or the other, so that's what we have so far. Now we're just gonna find values and plug in. So uh, the, the value of df dt is going to be, if you look at f of x, y, the derivative with respect to x is just three. If you look at uh, x, right, so that's uh, x is cosine of t, the derivative of that with respect to t is going to be negative sine of t. And then uh, partial y is, so we have 3x minus 7y, partial y is just negative 7. And then uh, dy dt, so y is sine of t, dy dt is going to be cosine of t. And then we just need to evaluate this at uh, t equals 0. So df dt is such that t equals 0. We're gonna have three, the sine of zero is zero, and then negative seven, the cosine of zero is one. So overall we get negative seven. That's a pretty good problem. Let's take a look at the next problem, which is number 11. So f of xy is x squared minus three xy. Our path that we're following, r of t, is cosine of t, sine of t, again, again the unit circle, and we're gonna be at t equals zero. So we're gonna do the same thing, right? So uh, df dt, so f is overall just a function of t because f is a function of x and y, but x and y are both only functions of t. So it's actually possible to do the composition and um, rewrite f as totally a function of t. That's why we're finding df dt instead of partial f, partial something. Um, so let's see if we can do this. So it's gonna be partial f, partial t, oh, sorry, x, partial f, partial x times dx dt and then plus partial f partial y and times dy dt. All right, and now we just find the values uh, that we need. So partial f partial x, uh, derivative of f of xy with respect to x is gonna give us two uh, x and then minus three y. dx dt, x is cosine, so the derivative of that is negative sine of t. Um, plus partial f partial y. So x squared has no y's in it, so the derivative of that is zero with respect to y, and then the derivative of negative three xy with respect to y is negative three x. And then we have to multiply that by uh, dy dt, y is equal to sine, so dy dt is cosine of t. And I think we're pretty good. So now what we need to do is evaluate this at t equals zero, but at t equals zero, um, x, which is cosine, so x is going to be the cosine of zero, which is one, and then y is going to be the sine of zero, which is zero. So every x becomes one, every y becomes zero, and every t becomes zero. So uh, df dt is going to be uh, two, and then the sine of zero is zero, and then x is one, so negative three, the cosine of zero is one, so overall we are getting negative three. That's our answer. All right, let's look at the next one. So we have um, f of xy is sine of xy. This time our path is different. We're not on the unit circle anymore. Um, we have r of t is e to the two t comma e to the three t. And again, we're gonna deal with this at t equals zero, which is very generous of the problem writer. Um, so we need to remember again that uh, df dt is gonna be partial f partial x times dx dt plus partial f partial y 
times dy dt. All right, so now it just becomes, it's kind of like a substitution problem. You just have to like find the values, sub them in, and kind of go from there. So uh, df dt is going to be, uh, so sine of xy, the derivative with respect to x, is going to be cosine of xy, and then the derivative of xy with respect to x is just y, so we're going to get y cosine of xy. And dx dt, x is e to the 2t, so is going dx dt is 2e to the 2t. Partial f partial y, so we're doing the derivative of sine of something is cosine of that thing. The derivative of xy with respect to y is x, so we're going to get x cosine of xy. And the derivative of y, y is, or dy dt, I should say, um, y is equal to e to the 3t, so dy dt is 3e to the 3t. Okay, so now we have to sub in um, t equals 0, but at t equals 0, we're going to get r of 0, which is just 1, 1, right? e to the 0, comma, e to the 0, so 1, 1. That's going to be our x and y. So x is 1, y is 1, t is 0. So let's do that. x is 1, y is 1, and t is 0. So you're going to get 1 cosine of 1, and then 2 e to the 0, plus um, 1 cosine of 1, 3 e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1. Um, so because e to the 0 is 1, we really just have 3 cosine of 1 plus 2 cosine of 1, so overall 5 cosine of 1. Okay, so I mentioned we are finding df dt here because we can rewrite f as a function just of t. Do the substitution, right? f of t is going to be sine of x is e to the 2t, y is e to the 3t, so sine of e to the 2t times e to the 3t, which is e to the 5t. So f of t is really just sine of e to the 5t. We didn't really need to use the chain rule on this. We're practicing using the chain rule, and that's why we did it. Um, so df dt, this is like a calc 1 derivative, right? It's just going to be 5e to the 5t times cosine of e to the 5t. And then if we let t equal 0, you can see that again, we are getting 5 e to the 0 cosine of e to the 0 or 5 cosine of 1. So you get the same answer either way, but we're practicing the chain rule. I'm going to stop this here and pick up uh, with the rest of the problems from this assignment in the next video. So I hope this was helpful. Good luck.